what I'd like to do is talk about five things. Uh, again, I'll do this very briefly. I want to say a word or two about the rail industry and the economy, a little bit about the level of railroad output. Output is something that economists keenly watch in terms of, of the health of an industry. Uh, we'll talk a little bit just about the mix of, of outputs that uh, have been occurring in the, in the industry and the changes that have happened, rail employment, and finally, rail investment. Now, the first slide I want to show you is, I think, extraordinarily interesting. Uh, on the vertical axis, what you see is a percentage change, and what we're going to do is measure the percentage change in two variables. This is year-over-year changes measured at a quarterly rate for two things. One, rail traffic, and number two, goods-related GDP. So what we've done is stripped out service-related activities of GDP. And what you see uh, that's apparent just in the visual is that there is a very high correlation, and indeed it's 97% uh, correlation, between GDP, goods-related GDP, and the and the year-over-year -year change in rail traffic. So. If you're in the rail industry, you know that you are very closely yoked to the health of the, of the economy. This is not a secret for anybody, but I think it's just sort of interesting to see this in the actual numbers. And the other thing that it does then, at least in my mind, is to provoke a question. Well, if, that's correlation, if that correlation holds, let's think about what does the future look like? And of course, economists are so good at forecasting the future that I just couldn't help but bring uh, into play uh, two uh, forecasts, one by uh, a, a very elite uh, macroeconomic advising company called micro, micro, Macroeconomic Advisors, and the other is the blue chip consensus of, of firms. And the numbers are a little small here, but what you see, whether you look at Macroeconomic Advisors or the blue chip, you'll see that there's a, a forecast for reasonably healthy growth in the nature of almost, let's call it 3% for the first half of 2017, tapering off a little bit, but still staying pretty healthy uh, for 18, for the end of uh, the year and on into, into the, the year next year. So that bodes pretty well, you would think, for the future of uh, output for the, for the rail industry. In terms of revenue, you can see that uh, this is a chart that shows from 2007 to 2016 what the, what the revenues have been. And, and as you see here, revenues peaked in 2014 at $75 billion. They've fallen about 16% uh, since that peak. Uh, what I think is sort of interesting about that is that if you look at uh, tonnage that is originating in the United States, it too has fallen about 16%. So what you've got is, if you think about revenue per ton, that that stayed about the same. So it seems that prices are reasonably stable at this point. Car loads uh, have fallen from a peak in, uh, a recent peak in 2014. Uh, they've fallen by about 2.1 million car loads. Uh, there is a question, of course, of what's driving that. So if you look here and look at coal car loads, uh, it accounts for 1.9 million of the 2.1 million reduction. So if you think about where is this reduction coming from, it's coming really principally from the coal industry. Uh, in terms of, of the uh, share of coal as a, as a percent of rail revenue in general, you see that going back to 2011, uh, we had a peak of 25%. Uh, coal was 25% of re industry revenues back in 2011. That has now fallen consistently to 14%. So it's a big shift in the, in the mix of coal of, uh, of outputs. Why has that happened? Again, this isn't, this isn't a mystery. I think most people are fully aware of this, but if you look at uh, fuel source as, a, as an intensity measure in the generation of electricity, what you see is that coal has fallen precipitously in the electric utility industry from 52% uh, in 2000, all the way down to 30% uh, today. That, of course, has been prompted by the second line, principally natural gas. Natural gas prices have fallen markedly, and that has stimulated the generation of electricity through combined cycle fuel turbines and, and so on in the, in the uh, industry going from 16% to 34%, uh, making up about 18% of the 22% reduction in, in coal. 
The other uh, big story there is hydro, and hydro is, or, or not hydro, I'm sorry, renewables, which has gone from 2% up to 8%, which I think is sort of interesting as well. Uh, in terms of uh, another big story, another big story over the, over the longer term hi history, this going back to 1980, is thinking about the growth of uh, intermodal traffic, which grew consistently and steadily until the Great Recession, and then began to grow again consistently. And you'll notice that I have a little asterisk. The one asterisk is in 2016, at, when, at which time we saw a decline. And the question is really here, what's going on? Why in the world would intermodal traffic have declined in 2016 after representing such uh, significant uh, growth over the years? And here I think what I did is I went back to uh, to just simply looking at diesel fuel prices. And the, again, this may be a little tough to see, so I've highlighted it a little bit. But fuel prices over the 12, uh, 2011 to 2014 period were around $4 a gallon. Uh, in 2016, they went to $2 a gallon. So you had a 50% a drop in the price of diesel fuel, and fuel prices are, fuel costs are about 40% of typical trucking costs. So you had a 20% cost shift in uh, the principal competitor to rail. So it's not surprising that you would see that shift. Uh, you see that uh, fuel prices have begun to rebound a bit and that maybe will bode a little bit better for the rail industry. Now let me take a look because most of those longer trends you are well aware of. Let me take a look just at the most recent data that are available. Uh, here, uh, what I've got is total U.S. Uh, car loads from January uh, of 2011 all the way up through May of 2017. Uh, and what you see, uh, again, to try and highlight this and make it a little more clear, in 2016, I put a red bar where we were last year in the first five months and where we are today. So you see that the most, while there's been a downward trend in car loads, that happened over the 14 to 16 period. You see an uptick uh, over the first five months of this year, and that's very encouraging. Uh, you also see that if you look at car loads excluding coal, you see a rather significant and pronounced increase. That's, again, uh, a healthy indicator of the industry. And here you see intermodal traffic for the first five months has, again, increased rather substantially. Uh, it's not clear that it'll reach the levels of 2015 but it is up certainly from last year's low of two th in 2016. Uh, here uh, you see uh, the car loads of coal, and I think the story here is really twofold. One, I had told you that, that there was just a big, big decrease in the number of coal car loads, uh, in the but in the first five months of 2016, we saw the uh, nadir, the really low point, by this year, the good news is that coal car loads have actually rebounded quite a bit. Uh, that's, that's, again, a bit of an encouraging sign. Uh, and here, uh, this, this is one I, I, I always struggle with because it's real employment. I, I told a group last night that I, when I look at this chart, I was thinking about doing another chart that showed participation at the Georgetown Colloquium as a share of rail em, uh, employment and that it would be skyrocketing. But the chart is actually not as bad as it looks. Uh, and and I, I want to point that out to you because uh, it, it has to do with the, the vertical axis. This is only about a 15% a decline. It, it, it is not quite as precipitous as it might seem. And you'll see that in 2017, it appears to have stabilized a bit. I'm not sure where it goes. Maybe some of the people in this room would have a better indication of, of where that's going than I would, but it, it seems to have stabilized a bit. Now, turning to, I think, uh, a very interesting statistic for economists anyway, is, uh, is investment. And investment, of course, is the bellwether or an indicator of, the, of what are industry executives? What are the people that actually have skin in the game thinking about the future? What do, they, what do they really believe is going on? What are the opportunities down the road? And here you see that while investment has fallen from a peak in 2015, you still have almost $26 billion of investment in this industry. Uh, if you were to compare that level of investment to other industries, 
it is prodigious. I think really only, I can only think of one other principal industry that is really quite as significant, that would be the telecommunications industry, also very, very capital intensive. Some of the firms in the rail industry are spending multiple billions of dollars to, to get there. So I thought that might give you a sense of, the, of where we are, gives you a little bit of a thumbnail sketch, doesn't tell you everything about the industry. Clearly it's an industry that is in flux. Uh, I haven't given you a complete picture, no, not at all. Uh, what we need to have, of course, is a richer discussion of the fundamental economic forces that are driving this. And in other words, to be whether you are here as a business person or a regulator or a consumer or a legislator, you're going to be better off if you understand the economic fundamentals. As an academic, I know I'm very curious about this, and that suggests that we get on with the colloquium. So thank you very much. I'm going to turn.